All right, so here we are to talk about King's Quest VI and my playthrough. And the original playthrough, if you watch it without commentary, is almost six hours long. Uh, with this King's Quest, I want to do the long playthrough. There's two ways to beat King's Quest VI. You can do it where you uh, wear a disguise to get in the castle. There's another way where you go a much longer roundabout way. And I can't remember if I've ever actually beat it going this long roundabout way. So what I did is I took the video and sped it up. And that was still over four hours long. So then I took it and sped it up again. And I figured this is what I would do the commentary on is this version here. So it's going to be flying by really fast because no one wants to hear me talk for four hours. So here we are at the beginning of King's Quest VI. Um, Alexander is thinking about Cosima and uh, tells his mom that he can't stop thinking about her, which is kind of odd because he's only seen her once and very briefly and can't get her out of her mind. But it's fantasy, love at first sight, and whatnot. But the magic mirror shows him Cosima. Uh, it's getting way ahead of me. But basically, the magic mirror shows him Cosima and Cosima is thinking about him. And his magic mirror has done a lot. So in King's Quest 1, uh, Graham, who was a knight at the time, is goes on a quest to find this mirror. In King's Quest 2, it shows him uh, who would eventually become his wife and Prince Alexandra's mother. And then in King's Quest 4, it shows Rosella, uh, the fairy island, and all that stuff to get the magic fruit. And then, so here we are in King's Quest 6, where uh, it shows uh, Prince, Prince Alexander um, how to get to Cosima. So they're, they're, they're on a boat. They sailed for three months. And uh, things look grim as a storm approaches and looks really grim when it's like super sped up and the boat sinks but fear not prince alexander actually does survive as do the rest of his three crew members that you briefly see so basically like every king's quest game or any sierra game really if you see anything try to pick it up look at everything try to pick it up because if it's not nailed down there's a good chance you will get it for example his ring and uh you'll see here this pie board you move it which does not look like you would pick it up but it actually moves looking in there there's a wooden thing and then there's a coin so you take the coin and normally in a hole in a tree something quest but this time it isn't so now we go talk to the guards who are dogs and uh prince alexander tries to convince these dog guards that he needs to get into the castle and see Cosima. i'll probably speed up the portions where it's irrelevant as i do the edits again so you take the ring because they say they they wouldn't let anyone in unless you can prove that you're royalty so you take the ring that you found on the beach that is a davantry symbol and so this dog apparently recognizes it but then this guy who's the captain does not recognize the ring like whatever so you follow him in and you get an audience now in the sped up version you're not going to see it uh, except for maybe just a second ago, but it happened really fast. But the guy in the back, who's like looking back and forth, his eye glistens. So you know he's aligned with this prince who is now going to marry Cosima. Uh, you discover that Cosima's parents have died, and now it's time for Cosima to get serious. He's going to get married to this prince, and the kingdom will be united. Life will be good, even though right now life is a little hectic on the islands. So Alexander is uh, escorted out and basically told never come back to the castle again and leave the island pretty much. So if you go to the side of the castle, you see there's there's no way in. Now this old man here, it's kind of tricky. He sells like, I believe it's like five lamps. And if you purchase the wrong one, you will dead end in the game. 
you need to have the right lamp that matches that genie that we saw like looking back and forth otherwise it dead ends so if you go in the bookstore there's like a book here you can take a look at it and he says pretty much keep it now this old mysterious man over here in the sped up version you're not going to see it but every once in a while he'll turn his head and you'll see his eye glisten similar to the genie that we saw in the middle just, and there's rows and rows of books so you just click through some like i said click on everything because there's bound to be something here and indeed you do find a book it has all these love poems in it and they're over the top like lovey-dovey and uh, as you read it one of them eventually has a page that falls out that has this great poem that alexander says hits close to home which is right there so when you pick it up the bookkeeper pretty much says you know what keep it i keep trying to glue it in there it doesn't stay and on this table there's like a book that talks about like gestures and whatnot and uh it'll become evident who is reading this book later and this guy talks about how he will trade stuff for exotic books and he has a spell book there on the table that he'll trade you for if you can find a exotic book that he does not have because he says that the spell books are useless to him which you would think about it, if that is the genie back there and we'll discover that it is and you're overhearing this conversation and you're trying to stop prince alexander wouldn't you just go buy that spell book be like if he's interested in it let's take it before he gets to it but eh, whatever So this guy has like my favorite voice in the game. He's got the best accent. And he basically has a couple items on his uh, counter that you can basically buy and then start trading items for. And he'll trade out any item that, that you have basically for any of the items he has there. Which is like a bird, a flute, a paintbrush, and a uh, tinder thing, tinder box. So you know already you're gonna to have to use each one of those at some point and then i clicked around all over the place to see if there's anything else cool or interesting the bat wings right there remind me of the bat wings that the uh servants of lois or however you pronounce her name in king's quest 4 that's what it looks like so then there's this girl who's being scorned at by her um not her mother but the one who adopted her basically treats her like hell and complains about the flowers and then there's this boy who dives off the pier who's like hey jump in the water with me because it's super cool and uh, if you watch him closely you won't see it in the sped up version but his eye glistens so you already know he's bad news so this is the ferryman who uh once ferried the boat around the green isles but since the islands are now um, not in a good state, there's like fighting among the islands, uh, the ferry's pretty much been grounded. And this is what he talks about. Like you can talk to him over and over and over. He talks about how he's got bad luck. His family has run the ferry forever, but like instability among the islands has increased to the point where it's just not safe to be traveling on the ferry anymore. So they grounded the ferry. So Alexander is naturally like, well, is there anything I can do to get the ferry going? And he's like, oh, I don't know. This guy has a lot of information to share about the island. Having ferried between them all, he's uh, he'll tell you about the four or five, the four islands that he's aware of. And like any King's Quest game, you basically talk to someone until they repeat the same thing over and over and over again. And then on his table, he's got like a rabbit's foot, and you ask him about it, and he says basically take it because it's not brought me any luck, and maybe if you take it away, I might have luck, which makes no sense, but whatever. You graciously thank him, and then part ways. And there you'll see a jester reading the book about jesters, 
and he will come into play later. He talks about how he knows Katsima, and you eventually talk to him and show him the ring, and he'll say, oh, he's heard of Daventry, Katsima's talked about him, and then naturally Alexander's like, what? She talked about me. What'd she say? He goes on to talk about how essentially she's going to be married, and how she seems very different. That'll come into play later. He has a lot of information about Kasima's state, like what's going on with the family. Anytime you try to talk to the uh, old man slash wizard slash golden eye, he just ignores you. So essentially you pawn off your ring now that you've shown it everywhere that you need to. And he says, take your choice and take one of the items. Dude comes for a candy thing, doesn't get it. And then now he's basically reporting back to the prince. About uh, things that he's overheard you doing. And the prince says, well, we have to get rid of him one way or another. And you take one of the candy things that he just took, which made him all drowsy. So you take the nightingale thing. And similar to King's Quest V, you search in there. You find, uh, I don't think you find anything. Now you have a map. And for this, well, we'll go to the other side first. So there's some words floating out in the ocean. That, and there's a clam that says he can't sleep. So you take the first book you found and you read it to him and he gets bored and he'll eventually yawn and you can yank out the uh, pearl. You just gotta do it really quick. And when you do so, he says, hey, it feels better, and he goes to sleep. So here come these gnomes who have the five senses like see, hear, smell, taste. And you basically gotta trick them that you're one of the uh, creatures of the isle and not a human. So using those five items, you basically trick them and then they go away. So clearly there's that piece of paper that you want to get that's hanging on the web with this uh, Black Widow. I'm not going to make it easy on you. So what you have to do is you tug on her web, and you get a piece of that paper. And then uh, you click on that, the bookworm comes out and talks to you about having a rare book. So there's a creature, it's hard to tell, the pixelated thing that's hanging upside down. And I realized after I had made this one where my mistake was, I couldn't figure out why I was pixelating so bad when I was saving it. It's because this saves in a resolution of like 320 by 200. And the intro that I put on front is uh, 1980 by 1020. 
so the video was automatically stretching to that resolution. So going forward, hopefully I remember that and I can actually not make it so it looks pixelated. So you talk to the little creature and he eventually commits him and you show him like the words and he gets all into it. So if you touch the water, it tells you that it's hot and you cannot cross it without dying. Well, if you try to touch anything on our web, it is death. So you give them that usual creature and they're reunited. So now you have a rare book. So going in a swamp, by the way, kills you. I don't know what kind of drugs the people were on when they made this part of the game. Not just the knights, but the screen before it. They basically tell you no one's allowed to enter in the land because the opposing queens are fighting. And they're arguing over, I believe it was like a piece of coal. Because it was stolen, originally. So they go back and forth, back and forth about it. Prince Alexander tries to come up with a peaceful solution, but they won't have it, and she drops her scarf. Like this screen, I don't know what they were on when they did this. Bird lettuce, rotten tomato. So you have the iceberg lettuce, which you chuck into the warm water. Makes it eh, moderately warm, but at least crossable. Now you have a lamp, which the dude in the town that I said you can dead end at, he trades lamps for lamps. So when you go here, you'll notice that the gardener has the flashing eye, and he says, come on in, but when you move, the statue right there, you'll see, uh, follows you. So you know that's a trap. So once again, you talk to the jester about Kasima. He basically warns Prince Alexander, like, hey, you know what? She's going to get married, forget her. She's afraid for your life, that type of thing. But he thinks something's up, like she's not acting like herself.
So you give the bookkeeper guy the book that you got from the bookworm, and he gives you the spell book. And it's got various spells in there, all of which you're going to have to use. Thankfully, the spells, the way they work in this game, are not like the way they work in King's Quest 3, so that's good. So now the consumer's bird is up there, you wind up the bird you got from the store. And now it trusts you. Even though we see a snake with the uh, flashing eye, so we know it's the uh, little wizard guy. So with the note, Kasima reads it, and she's like, oh, that's so sweet, but he's in danger. But give him this, like, little token of my love. So now he gives her the little poem thing. Gets a note back, reads it. She wrote a lot for having not moved her hand. Good day, Alexander. So now we no longer need the birds, so let's take the flute. So you touch that, the, it's a dogwood tree and it barks because it's a dogwood. But you get milk from the, uh, I don't know why I did that. So you play the flute and all the plants begin to dance, which gives you the opportunity to take the hole in the wall, who's no longer being protected by the plant. Take the cabbage. You give the cabbage the, uh, the milk you got, and then you get the tear from the other one. So you talk to the stick in the mud and the bump in the log. Because you just do. You basically find out that these two have been bickering back and forth for eons about, like, swamp stuff. So 
to give the tomato to the bump in the log. Rotten Tomato's like, what are you doing, bro? He chucks it, misses, and then he throws, like, swamp moss gooey stuff at the bump of the log, which is what you need. Use the cup to scoop it up. So now we've traded in a flute. So for this thing, I admit using the walkthrough because I initially tried and I would get halfway up and then not remember what one of the signs is. And it's like in the, uh, the book a little bit like here. I had to look up what the signs were because I could not remember for the life of me. This is so painful because if you watch at normal speed, there's so many times where he goes, Whoa, look out! Whoa, look out! And you get to the top, and there's a woman here who offers you questionable contact, but has a glistening eye. She talks about how it can make you fly. Like, nah. So you're going to use the tinderbox which you just traded earlier. Make your way through. And here you approach the guards. They're like, hey, what are you doing here? How'd you even get up here? No one makes it up to the cliffs of logic. Humana humna, we're going to take it to our leader. And they're like, hey, what are you doing here? No one ever makes it up to Cliff of Logic. Uh, we have to imprison you. Make sure you're cool. Prove you can get out. Break the curse. Uh, we're going to throw you in with a Minotaur. So uh, pretty much off with you. And Prince Alexander's like, cool. Guess I'll do what I gotta do. Like, we'll wait right here. Like, cool. Oof. So, my playthrough, I removed it because I was wandering these dungeons forever. Like, I found most of the items, I could just never find my way back. I was too lazy to map it like I did when I was a kid on graph paper. So, I ended up using the walkthrough to get the exact directions this time around when I uh, replay when I restored so that I could just walk through it and know exactly where to go but I still mess up <laughs> from time to time as you can see like usually when I got to these puzzles I tried to remember what to do myself it was just mostly getting through the maze and the directions that I used the walkthrough but as you can see I mess up still quite a bit <laughs> Oh. 
<laughs> Hooray. Pick up a shield, and like I said, anything you see that isn't nailed down, I always try to pick up. And then you step into a trap, and then the ceiling begins to come down. So you have to stop the gears. So you basically chuck a brick in there. And then there's a trap. So while you're, you don't really hear it in the fast forward version, but while you're going through, you can hear Minotaur sounds, and you can tell when you're getting closer. So when you look through the hole in the wall, uh, it does reveal a secret passage, and then the hole in the wall scurries away. Hopefully if you are in need of directions, you're not using this version to uh, get past walk through and he moves the tapestry just like you saw through the hole in the wall and reveals the secret passage and there's the uh, winged people's little daughter princess and Prince Alexander's like hey bro I get it you're horny get it because he's a minotaur uh, but then now you need to distract him and find a way to get rid of him What you need is that red, because, you know, bullfighting and the red thing. Basically trick him into falling in the fire. You ask her if she's alright, she says, no, I'm not alright. Tied up. Crazy Mundar. Like, why did I even do this? Why are you so bossy? She's like, follow me, bro. And you're like, okay. And you can see the crow standing there with the glistening eye, so now he knows. And he'll report back to the prince that you've helped the, uh, the Ares people, or whatever they're called, the flying people. And I'm like, oh my god, amazing, cool, you defeated the Minotaur and saved our daughter, you're awesome. So they take you to the seer, and the seer is like, hey, here's what I see in your future. Looks like it's Cosima. But things are weird. And things are not always what they appear to be. On and on and on. And see death. So be careful of that. And he says thank you, and they drop him off at the base. So now the Green Isle shows up, or the Misty Island, which was not available before until you see the Seer. And when you go here, there's like this little creepy village. You get some coal, a couple other things hanging on the wall. The coal, you can already guess what to do with because the uh, queens were arguing about it. So when the archer goes to shoot, you use the shield that you got from the Minotaur cave, grab a flower, 
and then as you try to go through, it blocks away. Then you use the hack and knifey thingy to get through, and the beast shows up. And he explains now he's cursed, and now that you come over, you're cursed as well to rule here, be a part of this. And you're like, no, I'm still cool. And he's like, if I could find a woman to truly love me, that would break the curse. Like, if she will love me for who I am. So now you need to find this dude, a woman who will love him. Thankfully, it's fantasy and love at first sight happens all the time, just like any Disney movie. Prince Alexander pretty much just agrees to help and says, I'll see if I can find you a woman that'll love you for you. So you remember that girl with the flowers? Give it to her and say, hey, there's this guy you might be interested in. He kind of rules this place, super exotic. And she talks about how exotic the flower smells. So basically, Prince Alexander is doing something what I would consider kind of shady, because he is pretty much tricking this woman into uh, going with him to see if she will love this creature that is a beast. Not being wholly truthful, I don't think. So then you show her a ring, and you know, when she's kind of questioning like whether or not she should go, you're like, I'm a prince, you can trust me. Yeah. And with that, she is convinced. The old mother-in-law person comes out, and she yells, he's like, whatever, I'm gone. So suddenly you're just here. Um, doesn't explain how he teleported there with her. She talks about how amazing he looks, and he is transferred back to himself. And then you'll see the she transfers as well. And you see like the little mongoose down, or the weasel probably, is actually what it is, down in the lower right with the uh, glittering eye. Those two are happily forever. Curse is broken and you're now free of the same curse. And she gives you her old dress, which is what she would use if you're doing the short playthrough, you use that dress to basically sneak into the castle. But we're doing the long playthrough, so we actually will not be seeing that. So you fill that up with some water, get another rose, leave, leave. Something on the table that you grab, go over here. They're still arguing. So they go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you give the coal to them. And they argue about the coal and leave. But I missed it the first time around because I waited too long. So I give the coal to the White Queen, since the Red Queen has the other one. And they start arguing about the coal. Which gives... Uh, Prince Alexander or something, I can't remember what it is. I just played it like a week ago. Okay. 
Ich muss sagen. So now we've used the tinderbox, the flute, and the bird, so naturally what we're going to use next is the paintbrush. But not before you realize that this is the shady dude and you fake your own death. So he goes back and basically says, yep. Alexander's dead. I made sure of it. I saw it happen. He died. But then Alexander wakes up and he's like, yeah, I had to fake my death because I realized that dude's shady. Step outside and do the uh, spell book. Thankfully, all you have to do is click on it and say cast. So, the next time you appear here, the druids are there and they capture you. This is part of the long play. Like, if you don't go here, you have to use the address to basically get in the castle. But what happens is they put you in the basket over the fire, and basically the lamp thing with the water explodes. And uh, you cast a spell with the thunderstorm, and the druids are like, ooh, our bad. I will say this about this King's Cross game. It is typically everyone's favorite uh, adventure game uh, in terms of Sierra games. Uh, the dialogue and the art and everything about it is probably the best, but King's Quest IV is still my favorite. But there is a lot of great dialogue and the art is amazing. So you pick up the fiery skull from the... Uh, Now we see the, I call it the nightmare, and there's a spell for charming creatures of the night. Now here, the ghosts that are solid, they're actually like ghouls, and they're the ones you have to avoid. Like her. So every once in a while you'll have to step out of the way, but then you get to talk to these two ghosts. And you learn that it's Kasima's parents. It's her mom and her father, and her father is so grief-stricken that he won't even talk. So it's basically the mom saying, we were murdered. And uh, they are sad that they won't see her, and they're afraid that she's making a mistake, and they're stuck um, in the in-between realm because they can't let go of Kasima. And there's a ghost here, who is a mother who has been separated from her son. 
And naturally, Alexander asks, is there anything I can do? And she says, find him and bring him back to me. So here, the death dude says, take it, please. This took me a minute, but there are some bones. And you basically play on the instrument. And when you speed it, they blur, but that's kind of funny. Uh, but he basically drops his keys, and you're allowed to get in. The coin you give to the ferryman. And don't walk too close to that door, or else he kills you. So when you look at this dead dude, it says like he was on a quest to do something similar to you, but died. So you take his gauntlet. And once again, give the coin to the ferryman. But first you get some, uh, I, I do believe you got liquid from the river sticks kind of thing. Rather than walk up to it, you knock on the door, and then it'll ask you a riddle. Eventually, when you tell it that you have to pass. So he essentially spells out love. So now you're basically talking to the ruler of the death realm, and if you don't do anything, he touches you and you die. But what you have to do is basically convince him to let the spirits of Kasima's parents be free. You basically convince him that the saddest thing that he could ever see is a reflection of himself because of what he's endured and what he's seen because he says there's nothing you can do to make me cry. So now you have to make death cry. And a simple mirror will do that. It's all the things he's seen, all the things he's endured, all the things he's watched. And the fact that he was never touched by it makes him sad. So he says, go away, make him stop. There's a tear. And Death says, we will meet again. So you tell them, and they're like, we can't just go in because the prince will have us killed, so we have to rally some people. Yeah. 
So things finally seem to be going in Alexander's favor. So now you have to make sure you pick the right lamp, as I said, or else you dead end in the game. So I actually looked up which lamp it is. And so you trade the lamp that you got from across the little pond. So now you trade in the tinderbox for the paintbrush. Ladies and gentlemen, we are approaching the uh, end. So after casting the spell, well first you paint the doorway, and then you cast the spell for the magic paintbrush. And it turns into an actual door. Now, oh, so here's the boy who is a spirit, can't find his mother. So you basically tell the spirit about the mom and show him something, and then he departs, finds his way back. gives a, uh, a vague warning that I used to be able to play and there's a secret way. And if you click everything, like I said, there it is. So you watch the whole and you overhear them talking about the wedding is going to be proceeding soon. through this hole and now you see Kasima and you whisper to her and you're like hey hole in the wall so she says she's fine but worried she says if I had a weapon something small I could defend myself So you give her the knife. She said, perfect. There's a lot of holes in this castle wall. So if you listen here, he's actually talking about how the deal's almost done, soon he'll be married, and then they'll have power and revenge. So now you know he has an ulterior motive. So 
go get the thing and it has a partial word of Zabu. Zadu. Inside there's a key, you take the key. Get some paper evidence of what he plans. Escape through the tunnel. So this took me a long time. I couldn't figure out where the where the button was on the wall. So I was clicking randomly, and I finally found it. It's on the bottom left. So now you're with the jester guy and you're like hey you might be able to help me if you can swap the genie bottle so it's the bottle that I own instead of the one the genie owns or that the prince owns and this is where I'm talking about where it can dead end if you have the wrong bottle the plan will not work And when you give him the bottle, he'll confirm right then and there whether or not it's the right bottle. And walked out too soon. When you look in here, there's something from each of the islands that has been stolen. So it's clear that the prince is behind the rift between the islands. And he's stolen them to cause this unrest. So when you go here, he's showing the paperwork you got from the other prince's thing, and he gets really mad. He's like, all right, let's break this up here. But if you notice, Kasima's eyes flashed gold there, so you know it's not actually the real Kasima. And now you chase him up the stairs, and you engage in an epic sword fight. If you don't have the right lamp, uh, you're not able to control the genie and it's over. So here you have a sword fight, and Kasima stabs him because your arms are getting tired, but I wasn't fast enough and I died. So once again, he's all pissed, he's like, we have to stop this wedding. And. Uh, See Kasima's eyes flash gold for a second, and then Kasima's parents show up, and then it's revealed that it's not Kasima. The prince goes running up the stairs. The genie goes to attack. Jolo gives me his lamp. Now I control the genie and I toss it down. Sword fight ensues again. Clack clack clack. She gives him a good stab, and that's how I don't wait. I stab him. And they kiss. And the guards come. And then one week later, the game gets stuck. Literally, I sat here waiting for it to go past, but then you hear the wedding music still going, so you know something's supposed to be happening. 
but for some reason the game got stuck on me. So you can see my mouse frantically moving about. <laughs> so restore back to the kiss. Guards take the wounded prince. And one week later, then it proceeds correctly. So the prince, Alexander, and Kasima get married. The real Kasima, not, not Genie. But then the genie decides to serve you because you're super nice. Your parents are there, along with Rosella. Kasima's parents are there. Jolo's there. All the people you've encountered throughout the game are there. And everyone's happy. And then he asks, well, we're kind of old, so will you stay here and rule? And Prince Alexander decides to stay on the Green Isle and rule, rather than returning home. Mom and Dad say how proud they are. Sister says how proud she is. Then it's decided. King Graham at the wedding sporting his cool, fashionable hat. And then everyone's happy. And thank you for playing King's Quest 6. Receive 231 out of 231. And it tells you here, don't go back and see the druids. The, there's another way to beat the game.